Hi guys, welcome back to Introduction to Rust. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be building our style tree. So we've already built what is essentially a DOM tree and a CSS tree, as well as a CSS parser and an HTML parser. Now, a style tree is much like our DOM tree, except each node in this tree includes a pointer to a DOM node plus its CSS properties. Now, of course, we could add a few fields to our DOM module to implement all of this, but that's not really how a typical browser would work. For instance, if you look at the Mozilla Gecko engine, it takes in a DOM tree, and then it produces what's called a frame tree, which is then used to build a view tree. Then Chrome's WebKit takes in a DOM tree and outputs what's called a render tree. It has a few other trees, which are called layer trees and widget trees. In our implementation, each node in the DOM tree has exactly one node in the style tree. Now let's actually get started coding our style tree. Our style tree code will live in this style.rs file. And of course, as with all of our other mods, we want to to make our style tree a submodule of our library. So we put in pub mod style. As for our imports, we're going to need the hash map structure from the collections namespace. And we also want to get the FMT trait and the STRs trait. From our DOM module, we want to get element data. We want to get our node and we want to get node type. From CSS, we want to get our selector data struct, our style sheet data struct, and our value data struct. As I mentioned before, each of our style nodes will correspond with a node. You can see here we've got this struct called styled node, and inside of it we have a field called node, which is a DOM node, and then we have our styles, which is our property map, which contains a slice of string and a value. And our value, if you remember, is an enum of color, length, or other. And then we have our children field, which is just a vector of styled nodes. And we're using these lifetime modifiers to make sure that everything lives long enough. So then we want to create a display enum. And this will contain block, inline, and inline block. Now these three values correspond with a different style of styled node. A block styled node corresponds with a element that will naturally look like a block, like the page itself would be a block. An inline style node will be something that is inline and inside of an object. So text or maybe like a button or something like that would be an inline. And then an inline block would be something that sits inside of a block but also is a block itself. And then of course, none will have no styling at all. Naturally, we want to have some methods for our style node. We'll create a new method that will take in a DOM node and a CSS style sheet and output our style node. And we want this method to recursively create our style tree without any of the style rules and then apply the style rules afterwards. We'll create a new vector for our style children. And then we want to iterate through every single one of our, our nodes children. So each of the children that is attached to the node that we're passing through this method, we want to pull out and then we want to match on it. And we want to see what kind of node type it is. For node type element, we want to take this and push it into our style children vector and we want to call our style node method and create the new child using the actual child that we're pulling out and then the style sheet that we had already. For the other node types we just want to leave this empty for now. Then we want to instantiate our style node and while we're instantiating this style node we want to just pass in the node that we pass through here and then for styles we want to match on node type again and for our node type element we want to pull out the node data as a reference and then we want to call a method that we're going to create called get styles and put in our e and style sheet for everything else we just want to create a new property map then for children we want to take our vector called style children and pass it into the children field for our get styles method we're going to pass in our element data and then we're going to pass in our style sheet and this will output in a property map and essentially this method is just created so that we can return the styles of the current node that we're looking at. So our element is the node's node data, and then the style sheet is the current style sheet that we're applying to this particular node. We want to create a new property map called styles. So then we want to iterate through each of our style sheet rules one at a time. If you remember, our struct rule had selectors and declarations, and both of these are vectors. So what we want to do is iterate first 
through the list of rules that we have inside of our style sheet, which again is also a vector of rules. And then we want to iterate through the selectors and we want to check to see if our element has the particular selector that we're looking at. So we're going to call this function that we're going to make later called selector matches. And then we want to look at the rule declaration. And for our styles, we want to insert those declarations, first the declaration property and then the declaration value. And then that will be the property map that we return. So we loop through through every single one of our declarations, put them inside of our property map, which is basically a hash map, and then we return that property map. And remember, our selectors are the parts that actually select the nodes, whereas the declarations are the parts that style the node. And that's why we specifically want the declaration. We want to make a simple helper method called value. This will take in our self, which is our styled node, and the name, which will be a slice of string and it will output an option of value and this function will allow us to get a style property for the current node also something to note is that we have this double reference here the reason we're doing this is because of the get function if we were to just use one reference then you can see here that we have a mismatch the specific reason why we're using two is because of our property map which has both a reference to value and a reference to string and because we want to get that value out we need to say that it's a reference to the reference to value. So here we're going to make another method called get display, which will return the value of the display property of the current node. And remember, we have this display enum, which has block, inline, and inline block. So basically this method is letting us know what type of display our node is. We want to match on the value, which we get from this function here. Remember, this is a double reference. So we're looking for, in particular, the display key. And then if we get sum with a value inside of it, then we want to double dereference s. And then we want to check to see if value other, then we're going to say, okay, well, we want the information inside of our other, and we're going to match on that as a reference. And if we get block, then our display will be a block. If we get none, then we'll have a display none. And if we get inline block, then we'll have a display inline block. For anything else, then we just want to have display inline. Also with our match on s, if we get anything else, then we want that also to be display inline. And then finally, if we get back none, instead of sum for our self.value display, then we want it also to be display inline. So by default, our elements will have an inline display style. So now we want to create a method called num or, and this will retain our style property for the current node or a default value. Our name is the property name of the return value. And then the default itself is the value that we're going to default to if we get back none. So first we match on self.value in which we get back a option of reference reference value. Then we want to check to see if the option has a sum. And if it does, we take the value from out inside of it. And then we want to double dereference that value and match on it. If we get a value length, then we want to take out the F32 inside of that. Otherwise, we just want to return our default value. And if we get back none from our original match, then also we want to return our default value. This method essentially applies to properties that have numbers in them. So any property that doesn't have a number in them will not actually respond for this particular method. But any property that it does have a number in it, for instance, like a size property or a padding property, those would all have numbers in them. So this method would be used for that particular reason. Then we want to implement the debug trait for our styled node. And this is pretty simple. We just want to print out the self.node and self.styles. Now we want to make our helper function for selector matches that we were using up top. This is going to take in a reference to our element data and a reference to our selector, and it will output a Boolean. And basically all we want this function to do is to make sure that our selector matches a DOM node. So the element is the element data for the DOM node that we want to match. And the selector is the selector that we want to match to that DOM node. So we're going to say for simple inside of our selector dot simple, which is a vector vector of simple selector, we're going to have a mutable variable called selector match. Initially, it will be true. First, we want to match on simple dot tag name. And if we get sum with a tag name back, then we want to check to see if that tag name is not equivalent to our element dot tag name. And if it's not, then we want to continue to iterate. If we get back none, then we want to do nothing. 
Then we want to match on element.getID. This returns an option of reference of string. And inside of it, we want to check to see if that string matches on simple.id. So we want to check to see if i matches with id. We want to see if they're not equivalent. And if they're not equivalent, then we'll just continue to iterate through. Then if our matching on element.getID comes back with none, we want to match on simple.id. And if we get back a sun, then we just want to keep continuing. If we get back nothing, then we want to do nothing. Now, this is interesting because we're kind of doing everything backwards. Then finally, we want to get all of the classes for our styled element. So we call element.getClasses, which returns a hash set with reference to slice of string inside of it. And then we iterate through simple.classes. And we try to see if that element classes contains the class that we're iterating through. And if it does, then we change our Boolean selector match. And if selector match comes back as true, then we want to return true. Otherwise, we want to return false. So this block up here first checks the selector part of our style sheet. Then this part checks for the ID in our node and style sheet. And then finally, this part tries to see if that class is in our node and style sheet. And if it comes back with none of them, then we want to just return false. Now, in much the same way that we have a pretty print function inside of our DOM module, we want to have a pretty print function inside of our style module. So our pretty print function will take in a reference to our style node called node and then our indent size which will be a u size we'll then get our indent size by iterating through a dent size mapping it to a map which then creates the actual spaces and then we'll collect that into a string and then we want to print out indent and node with a debug flag. Then we want to iterate through all of the nodes for our styled node. And we want to apply our pretty pin function to all of those children nodes. All right, so that's it for our style tree. In the next tutorial, we'll actually start to look at building our layout tree and then eventually our render tree, which will allow us to take a piece of HTML and a piece of CSS, combine the two, and actually output a rendered web page. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below. And if you disliked it, then downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night, guys.